The heading today is the derivatives of motion. Can I get a show of hands? How many of you currently study physics? Hands up. One, two, and a half, two and a half. Okay, so hands down. Most of you, therefore, are in the same boat I was in in years 11 and 12, which is that I also did not study physics. And so a lot of this, you have like the very basics of it from, frankly, from years seven to 10. Like you've learned some physics, even if we didn't call it that. Stuff moves around. As soon as you start to study that kind of thing, you're studying physics, even if you don't give it that big, scary label, okay? Now, we're going to dig into the mathematical side of that. There are some distinctions to make. Um, so if you feel like, oh, this is, why I, this is why I didn't study physics, okay? Don't worry, we're going to be addressing it from a side which is hopefully very familiar based on what we've been learning over the last couple of weeks. So let's remember, when you have an original function, you can differentiate it once. You get the first derivative. Um, geometrically, by the way, like on the graph, what does the first derivative tell you? What does it tell you about the shape of the graph? You remember? It tells you the? Gradient. The gradient, right? Very good. So this tells me, is it, is it going up? Is it going down? Is it, is it going up steeply or shallowly? All that kind of thing. Shallowly, is that a word? Anyway, um, first derivative gives you gradient. Second derivative, if you differentiate again, it gives you a different geometric feature. Namely, starts with a C. Concavity. Concavity, right. So this is not about are you going up or going down, but how is your going up or downness? How's that changing? It's how much the first derivative is changing, just like the first derivative is how much the original function is changing. Okay? Now, when we talk about, for example, gradient, right? When we say the gradient is zero, like that's a special kind of point on a graph, um, we use a very particular word, and we've said it over and over again. We call that a stationary point, right? And this is actually language, the idea of stationary is language that we borrow from motion. Stationary means you're not moving anywhere, right? Which is to say, um, your gradient is neither up nor down, you're just sitting at a, at a spot and not, not going anywhere, okay? So what we wanna do is unpack. Like, this is not the only kind of idea that we can tack onto this. In fact, all the way through, we can understand motion um, with a handful of new notation and a few different concepts that we need to apply to our existing knowledge, okay? So, the first thing is, when it comes to an original function, we normally say, well, where, where is your object that's moving? Where is its position? The main word that we use for that is displacement. So, if you have some starting position, displacement is how far have you gone from that starting position? Like, are you above or below your starting position? Are you left or your right? That kind of thing, okay? Now, I know this is going to be a little bit weird, it's part of why I deliberately didn't introduce it last time we had this table. We normally say y equals some function of x. But when it comes to displacement, we actually say that position, where you are, we actually denote that with an x. Which means that while y is usually your vertical axis, when you're talking about motion, x is your vertical axis, almost always, which is a little bit weird, and it's why I, I didn't want to confuse things before, but now you've spent enough time on this, hopefully we can now get comfortable with a new idea, okay? So, displacement, we denote that with an x. Now, when we go down to the next level, right, when we then differentiate, um, we're not differentiating with respect to x, x is the function. x is, in fact, usually a function of where is when is based on when, right? So we would say it's a function of time. T for time. Um, T is a funny little letter because it's useful for all kinds of things like say temperature and that kind of thing, but you will find it most frequently refers to time. And so I'm going to even write that down for you so you know when you come back to these notes, you're like, oh, that's what that T stands for, okay? Now, since we've got a function about time, we're going to differentiate with respect to time. So when I ask the question, like, how's your position, how's your displacement changing as time changes? If you think back to um, this triangle, do you remember this triangle that you met in like, oh, it must have been year eight or year nine when you were studying basic motion? Um, what are the three bits in this triangle? Time, distance, and speed. Time, time. distance and speed. Which one's which, by the way? Where, where does it all go? What's at the top? <laughs> which, it's, it's, gen it's generally distance, right? Distance, and then I think you got S on the left. Yep, speed and time. So we would say um, speed is distance over time, right? And in fact, even the units of speed kind of suggest this to you. If you say kilometers per hour, you can see that's distance on the top and then time on the bottom, okay? Now, we're gonna be a little more specific than speed. We use the word velocity. 
and um, we'll distinguish between these in a little more detail in a second. Um, but the key thing is, like, if you're thinking about the gradient, you're going up, you're going down, you're really thinking about the velocity of this object that's moving about. Okay? So, see how we've got dy on dx over here? This is going to be, think, we've got something quite different over here, right? Look at your variables, okay? What I'm differentiating is x with respect to time. So this is a dt over here, right? So dx on dt, um, we would say that this is, um, it some gets, sometimes just actually just denoted with a v for velocity, right? And um, because you'll see this fairly frequently, you know how we've got this dash notation for derivatives, right? f dash, f double dash, and so on. When you are differentiating with respect to time, because this is something that happens so frequently, it gets its own notation. Um, it's not super common, but you'll see it, so I want you to know what it means. Um, it's an x, because that's what you started with. Instead of using a, dot, a dash, rather, we use a dot right over the top. It's right in the center, okay? So velocity is how displacement is changing over time, dx on dt. Sometimes questions will say, hey, work out v for me, and they will assume you know that means velocity. And equally, they'll also see, uh, you'll see this notation too, which means differentiate x, do it once, with respect to time, okay? All right, so we went from displacement to velocity. Now if I, like I did before, differentiate one more time, I'm thinking about how is not displacement changing over time, how is velocity changing over time. Like if you were sitting in a car, for example, you could hit the accelerator and that would change your velocity, it would increase it. Or you could hit the brakes and that would also change your velocity, it would decrease it, you would hope, right? So what are we, what's the name for that? In fact, that pedal <laughs> that you're putting on, it's the acceleration, right? So that's the name that we apply to the change in velocity. Um, the only difference is, this word acceleration in the context of mathematics is a little more technical and specific. You remember I said you've got um, the accelerator pedal, and then you've got the brake pedal, right? And we think of those as two different things. But in fact, if acceleration is any change in velocity, do you see that the brake pedal is also changing your velocity? So it's also acceleration just of a different kind. Does that make sense? So I'm, you'll sometimes hear the word deceleration, and I'm very, very consciously not going to use that word because it, it starts to get confusing. Acceleration, and I'm going to write this because it's such a, a weird nuance, it's any change in velocity. If the velocity is increasing or if the velocity is decreasing, both of those are acceleration. It's any change in velocity. Okay, so let's think about how we write this, okay? Um, the first thing is, I actually should have written v first, but I'm going to write, fix it up here. Um, acceleration is sometimes just denoted with an a. Um, we try to avoid it as much as we can because we know we use a for all kinds of other things, right? Poor Pythagoras. So a is not as common, but you will see it and you need to know in the context of a motion question, they mean acceleration. Um, remember I said it's what happens when you differentiate velocity, right? So yeah, I could write it as dv over dt, right? You take this thing, v, and you differentiate it with respect to time, okay? But since v is its own derivative, what we're really looking at is the second derivative of the thing you started up at the top with, right? So I could write that, another way of writing exactly the same thing, d squared, what's on the top? Have a look, it's x, right? That's weird. And what's on the bottom, everything's with respect to time. So I'm gonna get a dt squared down the bottom, okay? Now there is one last notation that you're gonna use, and I've, I've kind of hung it on the end here, right? You know how you saw that dot? Now, it's a bit like a dash. It means differentiate once. Instead of with respect to x, it's with respect to time. Well, if I wanted to do it again, <laughs> then instead of having an x with one dot, you'd have an x with two dots. That means differentiate twice with respect to time, and it looks a bit like a weird, uncomfortable emoji, but don't overthink it too much, okay? So, uh, this is our um, extension to thinking about the original function, first derivative, second derivative. This is what it looks like when you're in the land of motion, okay? Now, before we leave off, I'm going to give us an example question that we're going to work through here because it's like the theory doesn't make much sense until you look at an actual situation. Um, we do have to, and if you've got space on your page, maybe draw an arrow down from the velocity box. Draw it down um, to the bottom. We just need to make a few um, small notes on this. This velocity here, dx on dt, v, x dot, it's what we call instantaneous velocity. 
Um, you know how we first learned about gradient um, you know, years and years ago, but then when we went to the derivative, we said gradient is over like an interval, right? You've got rise over run, right? Or rise over run, okay? But the difference with these derivatives and stuff like that is that your, your run, do you remember, like think back to first principles, your run is kind of like zero, right? It's like at a single point, which is kind of weird, right? Because there's no run. Well here, in terms of um, our displacement and time, a single point is about an instant in time. That's why we call it instantaneous velocity, okay? So it's velocity at an instant. Now we need to distinguish this with average velocity. And you're gonna see this language used and they sound similar because they're connected. Average velocity is still about comparing displacement and time, but it's not at an instant. It's over a, a period of time, right? I guess we would say over an interval. Okay, so I will say here's a start time, here's an end time, not at like one single instant, one single moment, um, it's over say an hour or over five seconds or something like that, okay? Now, do you remember what I said before um, that we're using this word velocity rather than speed, okay? The difference with velocity is that just like everything else here, it includes direction. So you can have positive or negative, which might mean up and down, or it might mean uh, left and right, or forward and backward, it could, it could mean anything depending on the situation, okay? Now when you compare that to speed, how many of you are on um, your L's already, or your P's for that matter? How many of you, okay, great, okay, so you sat in a car, you've looked hopefully at your speedometer, right? Now when you start going faster, you see the dial heading up, and then if you, for example, were parking, and you put your car into reverse, right? What happens to the speed speedometer? It still goes up, right? You're like, oh, now I'm going 10 k's per hour backwards. Speed, your speedometer, doesn't care which way you are going, whether you're going forwards or backwards. So speed doesn't include direction. It's uh, for, for the uh, small number of physics people in the room, right? That's why we call it a scalar quantity, okay? It doesn't include direction. Velocity and displacement and acceleration, they're what we call vectors. So they care whether you're going forwards or backwards. If you had a velocity meter in your car, it wouldn't just have zero to whatever. I think mine goes like 220 or something like that. Not that my Corolla could ever go that fast. Um, it doesn't just go positively, it might also go negatively if you were going in reverse, okay? So you've got velocity instantaneously on average and you also have speed. Now we'll come back to um, the implications of that a little later on. We need to have a look at an example.